Hi, Taurus sisters. My name is Amy K. Gunther. Welcome to the podcast, or maybe you're listening on YouTube. This video is part of a special collaboration with other YouTubers. These are ladies who love Yeshua, keep the Torah just like us. There are several links in the description for this video. The first ones are other ladies in that collaboration were all each doing a video about the Proverbs 31 woman. My video is going to be talking about contentment when we look at her. The other ladies, I don't even know yet what their topics are about. We're all releasing these about on the same day. So go and watch all of their videos, explore their channels, and thank you to those ladies for inviting me to be a part of this special project. I love it that there's more and more women doing this Taurus stuff and putting um, materials and content out there for us all to enjoy. So thank you. Go check out their stuff. There is also a link there to a verse, a Bible verse poster printable. It's free. It's on my website at TaurusSisters.com that you can download with a Bible verse that we're going to talk about today. And if you've never heard of Taurus Sisters, my name is Amy Kay. I run all of the Taurus Sisters stuff. The best thing I have is the magazine. Go to TorahSisters.com. I publish a magazine that I will mail to your house. The current issue is all about uh, the spring feasts. So go and get that issue. It is really, really special. There's also lots of free downloads on my website. Go and get all the free stuff. You're welcome to it. That's why it's there. It's for you. Take it all. And there's like a blog and t-shirts and stickers and other fun stuff on the website as well at TorahSisters.com. So if you never heard of me, welcome. I'm glad. I wish I could know you, but I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so um, I also have a Facebook page and I can interact a little more easily on Facebook. So there's also one more link to an or uh, a website called earthandwater.org. I'll talk more about them at the end, but that's an, uh, people I know who are in Africa providing safe drinking water for the poorest of the poor. So if you have extra money that you are looking to donate somewhere, go donate it to them because the more money they get, the more uh, water they can provide. So this is about the seventh time I have recorded this video because I get nervous and I mess up. And you know what, sisters? We're just going to get through it. <laughs> I have to get it done by midnight and it's 11 o'clock. And it might actually end up being really short because I think I'm realizing that the point I want to get across is not a deep, heavy uh, point that takes a lot of a, a elaboration. I think I'm just going to be able to say it shorter than I was, which is better anyway. I will be concise. I'll do my best. So when I looked at Proverbs 31, I mean, there's so much there. There's so, so much to talk about. But one part of it that really I think the Father has been teaching me lately, especially the last couple, three years, but maybe also very lately, is about contentment in my circumstances, which sounds weird. Like Proverbs 31 is about being a good wife and all this stuff. Well, it is. It's about a lot of things. But the Father showed me contentment. And, you know, I'm not here to teach you and to tell you what to think. I'm just here to have a talk with you. Let's just have a chat. And if you learn something, great. But test everything I say against scripture because Amy, of course, can be wrong. Um, so we'll just get that out of the way. But as I looked at Proverbs 31, at first I was going to talk about how she's a really savvy businesswoman because I do business now and I love it. And so that's fun and exciting. Uh, I, I really relate to her in that way. And by the way, I'm going to give her a name. She's called 31 for the rest of this video, <laughs> not the Proverbs 31 woman. We're just going to call her 31. So I really relate to 31 and that she's very business savvy. And that's fun to talk about making money and, and all of that. But the father, I think took me a different direction today as I was preparing for this and remembering all the studies and teachings and books I've seen on the Proverbs 31 woman over the years, especially back when I was in the mainstream Christian church. And sometimes I see two extremes when people an sort of like analyze this chapter and both of them can end up problematic. One extreme I've seen when people look at Proverbs 31 is they take it too literally because it's not really supposed to all be taken literally. It's a poem. It's a song. It's even an acrostic. In Hebrew, it's an acrostic poem. And we all know that poems and songs are very much about word pictures and abstract ideas, and they're not all literally 
to be taken literally is just like any poem in scripture. We have to be really careful with that. So that's one extreme. The other extreme I've seen with this chapter is that people tend to over-spiritualize it, which is kind of the opposite. And I used to over-spiritualize this as well as many passages in scripture. So I, I'm trying to like walk... A, a narrow line here where we don't want to go to either extreme because when you over spiritualize or take a passage too literally you're going to end up misapplying it to your life and misunderstanding it now i do believe that all scripture is useful for us and we ought to uh, apply it to our lives but there are things that sometimes we pull out of this chapter that just aren't there um so one of the things we look at and that strikes us right away with 31 <laughs> is that she was really well off, or you could say wealthy or rich. Uh, she was prosperous. And we know that partly, well, I one way I see it is that her husband sits at the gates and serves his community with his time that way. He's not having to hustle, 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 making money because they're kind of okay with money. So he has time to serve the community and go sit by the gates. Uh, I think they're an older couple for that reason, too. And they also have servants. She has maidens or servants helping her with who knows what. Um, so we consider her well off. And she's also, and she's doing all kinds of business, you know, and she's buying, she's making investments. She's buying a field to plant a vineyard. These are people who are well off. They've worked hard and she still works hard. She didn't just stop working and neither did her husband. He's still doing service. Uh, but they're they're well off and they're they're doing okay, <laughs> so we could say that they're prosperous. But prosperity has different definitions, doesn't it? In today's day and age, if you ask an eighteen year old kid what does it mean to be prosperous, you know he's he might tell you, oh, it means I have money for gas in my car, and I paid my parents back for the car insurance this month. <laughs> but if you ask that same kid when he's thirty what prosperous means, he's gonna have a very different definition, and so do I at forty seven. So, the the word prosperous can be a relative word. It doesn't mean the same thing to every everybody. But the idea of biblical prosperity. I don't think that necessarily changes. Our perception, our human perception of prosperity changes, especially throughout time, especially in these last hundred years, and maybe even you could say the last 20 years with the internet and everything is more instant than ever. That's a sign of prosperity that everything is instant for us. Man, I can order something on Amazon and have it delivered the same day because I guess I'm close to Lansing and Grand Rapids and Detroit kind of. Same day. Everything is instant. That's that's a sign of I'm prosperous. I can get things to me whenever I want them. So, but the biblical definition of prosperity, how could it change? God doesn't change. Now, I know that 31 is not exactly a real woman, but when we look at a woman like her in that time, if she, if she had, you know, her husband had time to sit at the gates and she had uh, doing all this business and she had servants, she's a prosperous woman. Her kids were had the nice coats, you know, like, ooh, I have the scarlet coat. They have the name brand coats. They're doing okay. But is prosperity relative? Really? No, just our perception of prosperity is relative. In reality, so what we do with her is we all want to be like her. We all want to be the Proverbs 31 woman. And a lot of it, we should want to be like her. She was an excellent wife. And uh, I want my children, when they're grown up, to call me blessed too. But if we want to be like her in every way, we also have to remember her life was very rustic. Not primitive. I don't think the ancients were primitive. I think they were extremely sophisticated, far more than we know and understand. But her life was, by our standards, fairly rustic and pretty uncomfortable. I don't think she had the amenities and the comforts that we have now. Most of you listening to this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast, you have internet. <laughs> um, you're probably in a developed country, in a first world country, listening to my voice, and you probably are pretty well off. So, but when we compare our lifestyle to 31's lifestyle to her what we call standard of living her standard of living was much lower than ours much 
much lower. Uh, she probably didn't, wasn't able to take a shower every day, but she was wealthy enough to buy oil to cover her smell. You know, how much that would really be hard for me <laughs> to not take a shower every day. I love my comforts and my amenities that I have in my life. So if I look at Proverbs 31 and I want to be just like her, I need to remember that while she is considered wealthy and well off, her life was very different and much harder than mine. Even though she's wealthy, she still works. She's working with her hands, doing what we would call that handiwork. I think she was maybe embroidering those sashes that she was trading with the merchants. And she's doing it late into the night with an oil lamp, I think, right? That's not easy. Have you ever done tiny handiwork with a candlelight? It's very dark. It's hard to see. If <laughs> she wasn't young, if her husband's sitting by the gates, that means she wasn't young. So her life was not that easy. I do agree she was well off and wealthy and rich, but that doesn't mean her life was easy and cushy. Our lives, my life, I'll speak for myself, is very easy and cushy. I have indoor plumbing. I have a house full of food. I have grocery stores all over the place, stuff delivered on Amazon, homeschool books coming out my ears all over my bookshelves. Like all of these things are luxuries and they're comfortable. I have a car so that my life is comfortable. She didn't have a car. So when we look at her, and we say we want to be just like her. <laughs> Do we really mean what we say? If the father took all of those extra comforts and amenities away from you tomorrow, I'll talk to myself. If he took them away from me, how would I react? Would I turn into a giant crybaby? <laughs> or would I still find a place in my heart of contentment? and still understand that I'm prosperous and I'm okay. Now, I'm not saying everyone who uh, does Torah and stuff is prosperous. I, I don't believe that's true. Some of those promises of that are like national promises and we're in exile. So those don't all apply to us right now. But if my life were suddenly actually like 31's life, where my living standards were like hers, could I still genuinely call myself not only okay and content, but prosperous? Because I don't think the Father, Yahovah, God Almighty's definition of prosperous changes. If he's going to prosper us, he's going to prosper us. And it's up to him what that looks like. It's not up to us. We can't say, I don't have unlimited data anymore, so I'm not prospering. Because it's a, to us, it's a, that's a comfort item, that's a luxury, and it's relative to us. But I don't think it's relative to the Father. For example, there are people in, on our planet right now who are suffering tremendously. I mean, we talk about indoor plumbing and um, unlimited data. There are people suffering with, and they have dangerous living conditions. Like, you know, they need water. To them, I live like a queen. I think if 31 was a person and she saw my life right now, she would think I was a queen. And she would think I was far more prosperous than she is. What I want us to get out of this is to appreciate what we have. It's not take it for granted. And as we look at 31 and we desire to be like her, and we ought to, she was there. It describes some great qualities that women should try to have. Sure. But also to realize that what we are living in right now is very new and it's very unusual <laughs> and it could all be taken away. And I'm not a doomer gloomer. I don't know what's going to happen. The world is really weird. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not saying it's going to go away tomorrow. But even if the world is okay, our own personal worlds can be turned upside down in a heartbeat. A lot of you have suffered the last three years. There's been all kinds of weird accidents and um, illness and um, sickness and disasters and all kinds of awful things that have turned several of your worlds upside down. And maybe you end up living with someone else for a while or you have to downsize or something. I love it that this lady, you know, this sort of fictional lady, 31, is 
something we aspire to be. And yet her conditions, you know, it's like Little House on the Prairie. Well, worse, really, <laughs> you know, um, or maybe better. I mean, Israel was very prosperous then. But still, I think her life did not. Have, she didn't have air conditioning and we she didn't have the things we have. So a verse that I've been looking at with this is First Timothy six. Well, verses six through ten are really good. Uh, but verse six. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Because what really made 31 rich, and this is what I'm sure the other collaborators here will, will talk about, is that she was walking righteously. It's a woman who walks righteously, a woman who is well thought of in her community, a woman who has a good reputation, especially with her husband, especially with her husband. He calls her praiseworthy. Um, and her children call her blessed. Man, if I could have reputations like that with the ones I love most, I'm doing all right. But even beyond that, with physical circumstances, can I be content and not just content, but joyful? See, she was joyful. That's what it's saying. She laughs at the future. It's kind of like she's cracking jokes. I think she's a fun, joy, joyful person to be around. And yet her life was hard. I mean, I know she had servants, but it doesn't mean her life was a cakewalk. She worked hard. And yes, she was used to it, but that doesn't mean it was comfortable. Because see, our perceptions of comfort change. We can get used to all kinds of things. There's been lots of stories of people who suffer horrible things, and they get used to their new discomfort or uncomfortable situations. But it doesn't mean that they're comfortable. So can we... Uh, be women who find a place where even if he takes it all away from us, that we can still consider ourselves blessed because blessings aren't relative. If the father says he's going to bless us, he's going to bless us. It's only our perception of comfort that's relative. Can we learn to say that we're blessed even when we have much, much less? Appreciate what you have. Share generously and go look at earthandwater.org. One of the ways I know that I am rich beyond rich is because I have so much water available to me. My friends all know this, my local friends. Oh, I, have a, I struggle with water and being picky about water. <laughs> but um, there's nothing wrong with being picky about water. But I know that because we, get, we, have the, we have a luxury of being picky about water. I have a house full of water right now. I have multiple sinks, showers, tubs, faucets, all the spigots outside, water everywhere. And I can go to the store and buy multiple kinds of water. And, and I have a Berkey and you know, it's all clean. All of this water is clean. What we're picky about is different levels of clean, but it's all clean. <laughs> that's how blessed and rich I am. And that's why I put in earth and water. And I would like you to consider donating to them because when you go and you explore their website, you'll see that they are helping people who do not have clean water and that kills people it kills people and it may and if they're not if they don't die they're very very sick and if they have to get clean water they have to spend a great amount of their life their time their effort just getting water and yes just because they get used to it i know the i know people get used to difficult circumstances but that's still suffering and it is still very uncomfortable for them and, and we can help them. So if you're looking for some place to help the poor, um, maybe that would be a good place. I, I recommend that you send them a check every month from your bank so they don't have to pay PayPal fees. Um, but sisters, that's what I wanted to say. I hope this was, this was, was helpful. I just don't want us to misapply Proverbs 31 and look at prosperity through the lens of 2023 America. Because prosperity in 2023 America is so different than it has been for 6,000 years of this planet's existence. And we're very spoiled and we are very... And me too. Like I can't even imagine what her life what 31's life was like, really. I don't know exactly what her standard of living was. There are a lot of clues in there. It's kind of an interesting passage to see what life might have been like for, for women then and the kind of things that they did and sold and made. But 
I know that I have these lenses of a rich, spoiled American on, <laughs> and it's hard to take those lenses off, but I'm, I'm trying to see situations and circumstances and people through, uh, through the way the Father sees them and through the way the Father sees what prosperity for Amy looks like. And chances are that my version of prosperous is not really in line with the Father's version of prosperous, um, at least for sure. Well, we're still in exile and I can't wait to go home to the land and I hope that Yeshua comes back soon. Um, but if he doesn't, sisters, I love you and I hope this is this was helpful. Go get the free printable with that Bible verse on that and really think about godliness with contentment and that that is the greatest gain is being content in all circumstances, um, as Paul tells us. And to look at 31 and to see that even though her life was hard, by our standards, <laughs> she was really well off if she were a person. She was a well-off person. Um, so that's it, sisters. Thank you. Good night.